Today, I'm gonna to talk about two quick tips for laying out photos in PowerPoint. For most people, simply getting the photo off of a client's phone is enough, but there are two quick ways that we can make sure that that photo has maximum impact when you're showing it to a jury at trial. So I'm gonna head over to PowerPoint and I'm gonna use uh, an example photo of me and a friend of mine, Mike Tisa, who came to visit me and my class. Mike Tisa is a hot seater at Aptus Court Reporting and he was visiting from San Diego. And here's the picture of me, Mike, and uh, Nick Caputo, who team teaches the course with me. And most people, if they got this photo onto a slide, uh, they would probably resize it to do something like that, which is okay. It's a little bit lackluster though. And there's a lot of information on this image that we don't need. We don't really need to see our feet. We don't really need to see the lights that are above us. So let's fill the screen with this image and see if we can't make it look a little bit better. So I'm gonna, with this image already centered, I'm gonna grab it by the corners and move until I snap towards the right end and then move a little bit further till I snap towards the left hand side. And I've covered up pretty much the entire slide with this photo. And I'm not sure exactly what I will be showing to the jury or not, unless I look at this left-hand side where I get a preview of what that slide is gonna look like. Now what I can do is I could take this image and because I have other things already on this slide, anything that I put on later is gonna cover anything that I've already put on a slide. So what I wanna do with this photo is I wanna right click on it and send it to the back. And then by doing that, then I get a preview in this thumbnail of what it'll look like with the title bar and the footer bar that I've applied to this slide. What I might also do for a slide like this or an image like this is to crop it just so that way I can have a better idea of what I'm working with on the screen. So I'll bring it from the top and crop it up from the bottom So then, and then click outside the area. And now I can see here's what it'll look like. And I think it looks pretty good. For this, I might even make it a little bit bigger because I want the name of the courtroom and the name of the school to be in the photo, but I don't need so much space on either side and I wanna make sure everyone can see our pretty faces. So I'm gonna move it in closer using this thumbnail area over here as a guide. Now I can move it over just a little bit further and there, now I think that looks great. And again, what I'll do is I'll right click and crop. I can't see the whole, all the edges of what I need to see. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit hitting that button down there in the lower left. And now I can make this fit the dimensions of the slide. Now this is something you don't have to do, but for me, this is something that I just like to do. It makes it easier as I'm going through and reviewing all my other slides as well to have things kind of cropped at least no bigger than the size of the slide. So there is my slide. I'll hit this button in the lower right hand corner to make it fill my viewable workspace area. And there's that picture. There's the three of us. I think that looks really good. So the next thing I'll do with that same photograph is I will blur the background. And what this technique is intended to mimic is anytime we see on the news on TV, people are taking videos with their phones, holding it up in portrait mode, and you end up with a vertical video. But television doesn't like to have kind of negative space. They like every image to fill the screen. But with a vertical video, you don't really have any extra pixels to work with. So you zoom in too much and you lose either something you wanna show or things start getting blurry uh, unintentionally and in an undesirable way. So what a lot of TV programs do is they'll put a background of the same image behind it so that way it doesn't look so obvious that we're looking at a vertical video. So let's do the same thing. Let's get that same photograph on this second slide. Pick this image again. And so this time I'll make the image the full size. So let's say we needed to, from an evidentiary perspective, see the entire image that's there. Uh, but we don't like all this gray space on the left and on the right. How do we get rid of that? I'm gonna make a copy of this exact image. So I'll hit Control C, Control V or Control D. And on the second image, I'll do the same thing I did before and I'll make it really big. I'll make it fit the entire width of the slide. But this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the format ribbon and go to artistic effects. And one of them over here is called blur. When I do that, it blurred the photo slightly and I might want it a little blurrier than this for our purposes. So I'm gonna right click on the photo and select format picture and come to artistic effects and increase that radius to 30 from 10 to make it really blurry. Now that I've done that, if I send this image to the back, 
Now I've got that blurry background, so you could see the same image twice, but the second bigger image is a little bit blurry and it's not distracting. It's better than looking at just the gray, or it's a matter of opinion, but I think it's better than looking at just the gray background on the sides. So now I've got the full image, all four corners, unaltered, unedited, and now we've got a nice colorful background to go along with it. So those are two things that television does to make sure the photos that it gets, like for the news, look their absolute best without altering the image or without having to go back and take another image. And I think that if we can apply the same things, that'll make our PowerPoint slides and our photos that we use in our PowerPoint slides look that much more professional and that much more believable in the eyes of a jury. So that's the two quick tips that I wanted to convey for you guys today. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. If you have any questions about it, feel free to leave in the comments. I'd love to talk to you down there. If you have any questions at all about any topics that you'd wanna see in terms of trial presentation, whether it's PowerPoint or trial presentation software, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. Always looking for new ideas and new topics and better ways that I can connect with you guys in terms of what you guys wanna see. Thanks so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.